Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade module three, lesson two. I want to start off with the I can objective here. I can solve a division problem and interpret the remainder in the context of the problem. And the learning objective, solve division problems and decide when to write the remainder as a fraction. In the prior learning, students divided four digit whole numbers by one digit whole numbers. Students explained division by using equations, rectangular arrays, and area models. Students divided using place value properties of operations and the relationship between multiplication and division. Now, moving into lesson two, step it out, question number one. It says a land surveyor rolls a wheeled device on the ground to measure distances. Each full turn of the wheel measures 14 inches. The surveyor measures 1,617 inches of land. How many turns of the wheel are needed to measure this distance? Okay, we're going to read it one more time and highlight out the numbers. A land surveyor rolls a wheeled device on the ground to measure distances. Each full turn of the wheel measures 14 inches, and that is shown in the picture to the right. The surveyor measures 1,617 inches of land. So how many turns of the wheel are needed to measure this distance? Okay, so this surveyor, he's measuring 1,617. He's measuring it by spinning a wheel on the ground, and each turn of that wheel has 14 inches. We're trying to figure out how many wheel, how many times the wheel is going to spin. Okay, so A says use the division to represent the situation. So we're going to take that total amount of inches, and we're going to divide it by the, by the amount of inches that the wheel turns. So we're going to take our 1,000. 617, and we are going to divide it by that 14. B, divide and write the whole number quotient and the remainder. So that's why there's a little bit of room off to the side on the right. Now we're going to do the standard algorithm and divide these numbers. So 1,617 divided by 14. So 14 into 16, 14 goes into 16 one time. And then 1 times 14 is 14. And we're going to put that below the 16. Then we need to subtract to find the difference. When we subtract, we're going to get 2. We're going to bring down the next number to continue our problem. So we're going to bring down that 1 to make it 21. Now we're going to do the divisor into our new total. So 14 into 21. How many times does 14 go into 21? One time again. So 1 times 14 is 14. When I subtract, 21 minus 14 is 7. I'm going to bring down that 7. So now I have 14 into 77. This is where division starts getting pretty tricky. All right. So I don't know my 14 multiplication. I just was asked to um, multiply up to 12. So this is where I have to really look at the number and try to estimate. All right. And if you know your 15s, that would be helpful as well. So I know if I can round 14 up to 15 to try to get close, and if I know how to skip count by 15, that's really going to help. So I have 15, and then 30, and then 45, and then 60, and then one more would be 75. So that would be 5 if I'm skip counting by 15. That's as close as I can get to 77. That's my best educated guess, even as a teacher. So I'm going to go ahead and give my educated guess of 5. And I don't know if that's perfectly correct or not. If not, I can just erase and try again. But for right now, I'm going to try 5. And now that I'm done estimating, done doing my mental math, now I need to actually multiply. So 5 times 4 is 20. Carry that 2. The 5 times 1 plus that 2 more is 70. Well, it's 7. All right, now 
When I subtract, I'm just going to get seven. The way I need to make sure if my estimated five that I um, got out was correct is if the number that I subtracted is lower than my divisor. So I'm looking at my seven and I'm comparing it to the 14. As long as the number that I got is lower than that number, then I'm okay. If it's higher, that means that I can divide and that answer would be one more. So in this case, it would, if it was larger, it would have been a six, not a five. Okay. So now I know I got 115 remainder seven. All right, so 115 remainder seven. Moving on to C. The remainder indicates that the number of turns of the wheel is not a whole number. Use the remainder to find the fractional part of the last turn. Okay, so write the remainder as the numerator. So the remainder in this problem was seven. So that's gonna be our numerator as a fraction, the number that's on top. Write the divisor, remember that was our 14, as the denominator. So with our remainder, it was seven, seven inches out of the 14 inches of the full turn. Going back to the problem, remember a full turn of the wheel was 14 inches. If we got one hole, it would be a full 14 inches, but it's not. In this case, the remainder that we have is just seven inches. So it didn't make a full turn. So what fraction of a turn is represented by the remainder? If we look at the fraction, it says seven over 14. And I know the relationship between seven and 14 is seven if I'm doing multiples, I can do a multiple of two to get to 14. So seven times two is 14, which means 14 is twice as big as seven. So if I wanted to divide both of these numbers, I would divide both of these numbers by seven to get a new fraction. It's called an equivalent fraction of a half. So seven divided by seven is one and 14 divided by seven is two. So an equivalent fraction here is going to be half. So it's the same thing. If, I, if my wheel was turning 14 times and I only got seven times, that's half. I only The wheel only turned halfway, All right? So D says, write the answer as a whole number of turns in a fractional part of a turn. So we're gonna take the whole 115 turns and then write the fractional part that we just found out as the total. So how many turns of the wheel are needed to measure the original <clears throat> 1,617 inches? We have to, the wheel has to turn 115 times, but also one more half of a time to get all of the 1,617 inches. So 115 and a half turns. All right, we're gonna move into the next page, the next problem. We're just gonna be doing step it out problem number two. All right, so it says a large plot of farmland will be used for a new field. The seed that the farmer will plant on this field is sold in large tanks. Each tank can cover 72 acres with seed. How many tanks are needed to cover the entire field with seed? Okay, so first thing I notice that there's only one number in this problem, and that's a little bit tricky because they don't give us the answer that we need in the word problem. They actually give it to us in the image to the right. So a large plot of farmland will be used for a new field. The seed that the farmers will plant on this field is sold in large tanks. Each tank can cover 72 acres with seed. Right, but we need to know the field size. This says it over on the box. That's the 1,140 acres over there. All right, so the question is asking how many tanks are needed to cover the entire field with seed? So the field size is 1,140 acres, and a tank of seeds can cover 72 acres. So, how many tanks are we going to need? So um, A, we want to represent the situation using a division problem. Then you want to write the division problem and you want to identify the dividend and the divisor. So there's two parts to A. B, then we want to divide to find the whole number quotient and the remainder. So you're going to be using the problem over to the right that they set up for you. You're going to be um, setting up the division problem there. C, 
The seed is sold only in full tanks, so how many tanks must be purchased to cover the entire field? Remember, if you have a remainder, you still have some of the field to cover. You're not allowed to be short. You have to buy an entire new tank to fill up the entire field. That is very real world, and you're going to have a little bit extra. That's okay, but you need to cover the whole field for this, which means you need to round up. D, how many acres will the seed from last tank cover? All right, I'm gonna have you go ahead and solve A, B, C, and D. I'm gonna have you hit pause here. All right, let's go over these problems. So for A, we wanna take our 1,140 and divide it by 72. So 1,140 divided by 72. And we also want to identify our dividend. So our dividend, I'm going to write as DVD. Remember, that was our um, whole number. So our dividend was the 1,140, and our divisor, the DVS, was the smaller number that we would be dividing by. That was the 72. All right, B says divide to find the whole number quotient and the remainder. So we're just dividing to the problem over on the right. So 72 into 140. I know that if I multiplied 7 by even by 2, it would be 14. If I tacked on a 0, 140, right? So I know that 72 can only go into 114 one time. All right, so I'm actually going to... Erase that and make sure it's right over that four so I don't get my place value mixed up. So one times 72 is just 72. Now when I subtract, four minus two is two and 11 minus seven is four. Now I need to bring down that zero so now I have 420. Now I have 72 into 420. When we have problems like this, this is where most students go, it's too hard. I can't do this. The numbers are too big. This is where I come in and I want to give you a really cool trick that helps even me because you know what? I want to be honest. I don't know the answer either. I don't know how many times 72 goes into 420. I'm pretty good at math, but I'm not that big of a math whiz. So I need tips and tricks to help even me. So what I do is I cover up the last two digits, and I'm going to do this in red to show you what I'm talking about. So I would look at the 72 and the 420, and I would cover up the 2 and the 0. And I would do this just with my finger, not with a pen, but to show you I'm doing it with red. So how many times does 7 go into 42? That you should know. 7 times 6 is 42, correct? So I'm going to guess 6-ish. However, I know that my problem wasn't exact, right? So I had 420 and 72. I'm not multiplying by 70. I'm multiplying by 72, which means my number is larger than that. If it was said 70, boom, six, easy. But my number is 72, which means when I multiply it out, it's going to be larger than 420. So when I guessed six, that's going to get me pretty close, you know? And if you multiply it out, you go, Ooh, shoot is a little too big. Let's pull it down to five. And that would be perfectly fine. But I know ahead of time that because I rounded down to 70, my number would just be too big if I multiplied it by six. So what I'm going to do now is pull it down to five. And my five is going to go above that zero. Now I can multiply out and figure out what the rest of my problem is. So five times two is 10. Carrie, five times seven is 35 plus one more is 36. Oh, and you know what? That looks a little scary. It looks like my number is not big enough, but you know what? Let's just keep going through the problem and figure it out. So zero minus zero is zero. Two minus six, not big enough. So borrow from the four, making it a three, making it a 12 and six. Okay. 60 is a really big number, but remember as long as the number that you subtracted is smaller than your divisor, and my divisor is 72, so as long as the number that I subtracted is smaller than my 72, then I should be just fine. 
Okay, and now that we have our answer of 15 with our remainder of 60, we can go and answer question number C. So the seeds the seed is sold only in full tanks. How many tanks must be purchased to cover the entire field? So we can't just buy 15 tanks because we have 60 left over. So we have to round up one and we have to purchase 16 tanks to make sure the entire field is covered. So that would be 16 tanks. And then how many anchors will the seed from that last tank cover? The extra one that we had. What was our extra? Our remainder was 60. So how many anchors will it cover? It'll cover those 60 acres. All right, that is it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish the rest of the lesson and I will see you for module three, lesson three.